we're going back to Alaska, to this small exclave called Hyder, home to the Glacier Inn, where some people get hyderized, and gateway to Fish Creek Wildlife Observation Site and Salmon Glacier, although the latter requires a little bit of a commitment through this not-so-great road. Then we continue the journey south, spending a night at a rest stop on the Yellowhead Highway and another night at a town pronounced Quenel, which will give us a chance to explore a little bit. Eventually, we'll end up at Hope, filming location for the movie First Blood, also known as Rambo. Buckle up, the Beeline South continues. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Cause I'm free in my RV. It is a beautiful drive on the 37A going towards Stuart, British Columbia. It is magnificent. Video doesn't really do it justice. Look at that glacier! I believe this one is called Bear Glacier, and according to what I've read, it's been retreating for many years. Let's get a little closer, maybe get a better view. Oh yeah, check that out! stunning drive. Too bad the sun is right in front of us. This would be a much better drive in the morning. Just two miles away from Stuart, which is nestled in this gorgeous valley. Stuart here seems to be a pretty nice town, but that is not where we're going today. There's the border checkpoint, but you only have to stop on the way back to Canada. So here we are, Hyder, Alaska. Here we are, we made it to Hyder, Alaska. That's the Glacier Inn on the left. We'll be back. It is still early. It is surreal to finally be in this place I've read so much about and watched so many videos. This unique slice of the United States in Canada. The 
this is it. This is the RV park. Camp Runamuck, it is called. And what we saw? It's also pretty much the whole town. There are some side streets and such, but you know what I mean. I don't recall how much this place was because I paid cash, but it was fairly cheap. Let's go get hydrized or something like that. Here we are. There is a no filming sign for no particular reason, but apparently still pictures are okay. It is completely deserted, so we're just gonna have an IPA and go home. Well, there was a sign saying no filming, so I just took a couple of pictures. It's a pretty unique bar today. There was no one there. I mean, it's a uh, Today is what? Saturday? Sunday? I don't even know. It's Saturday. You would think, right? Let's go back to the RV park. Tomorrow, we'll continue exploring. Well, good night. From Hyder, Alaska. Parking lot is full. Remote but very popular place. There seems to be additional parking farther down the road. Good morning. Parking lot's full, so this place is uh, more popular than I thought. Wildlife viewing 170 meters. Hmm. I guess we're using a mixture of metric and imperial around here. Hmm. And now we're the ones inside a cage. <laughs> I wonder why they call it Fish Creek. Oh, look at all the salmon in the water. I think that's why. What a hard life. That of the salmon. Swimming against the current, only to get eaten by a bear. Here we have some ruins. I don't really know what it is. Here we have some bear skin samples, brown and black. And as you can see, black is not really black. It's kind of dark brown. And this is the main observation area. The ranger said that bear activity has been slow. There was one grizzly this morning, but he left. Which is odd because 
salmon activity as you can see is very high so um, maybe we'll get lucky We may not get to see bears today, but the salmon and the seagulls, I mean, I believe they're seagulls, are pretty fascinating. The camera doesn't really capture it, but it is so beautiful out here. Yes, some of those shallow parts of the creek can be a death sentence for the swimming salmon. And a feast for the seagulls. Yeah, that one looks like it's dying. It's stuck. No, no, it's coming back. Okay. From July 1st through September 20th, in order to visit this place you need to purchase a pass at the Tongas National Forest website through recreation.gov. It is just $5 for a one-day pass. No. That does not look good for him. It is fascinating. Enthralling, I should say. Watching them struggle in the shallow water. And kind of sad, too. A wrong move could lead to their demise. But then again, they could get eaten by a bear, which arguably would be a faster, more humane death. No matter which way you put it, it is a hard life, that of the salmon. It's too shallow. The bird is there waiting for it. We could spend all day here, watching the salmon struggle, waiting for a bear to show up, but we're going to continue. Oh yeah, plenty of salmon, but no bear, so... We're gonna go see the glacier. We'll be back in the afternoon. Or around noon. I don't know. Sometime. Just a few feet past Fish Creek, the road turns into dirt. It is going to be a dusty ride. Oh no, construction coming up. And there is supposed to be this rather large mining operation on the Canada side. 
Yes, by the way, we're going back into Canada. Technically, we're back Welcome in Canada. Welcome to Canada. Oh, thank you. We're back in Canada. Well, almost. There we go. The speed limit sign in kilometers is a clear sign we are no longer in the United States. There is no border checkpoint or customs or anything like that since the only way to get here is on this road, which actually comes from Canada anyway. I was investigating and it seems to be a gold mine, right here, in what is called the Golden Triangle of Northwestern British Columbia. There seems to be a lot of gold in this area. Let's take a quick look. Look at that. Yes, you can see the mine from here. And it is huge. Wow. Yep. We continue on this dusty road. Yay, expedition vehicle! Here's our first glimpse at Salmon Glacier. The first of many, I'm sure. This is just the toe of the glacier, just a very small part. Every few hundred yards or so, you feel compelled to stop or slow down and admire the striking scenery before your eyes. And we've been blessed with such great weather today. Check out this view. Somewhere down there, crossing the river, is the border with Alaska. But nature doesn't seem to care which country it belongs to. It is all gorgeous around here. They don't look like much from afar, but as you zoom in, you realize those are some amazing waterfalls. We're starting to get some stunning views of the glacier now. And even though this is not the official viewing point, we're gonna stop. We are very close though. Standing on the edge. the surface, all fractured, cracked. Here's from a slightly different vantage point.
That's the way to do it. Helicopter tour. I was beginning to question the wisdom of driving on that grueling dirt road all the way up here. A whole hour. But I think it was worth it. I mean, the camera will never do justice to actually standing up here on this rock, but... That's an incredible sight. Well, the mosquitoes up here are relentless, but yeah, definitely, definitely worth the view from up here. Let's see if we can get all the way down there. There must be a helicopter base somewhere nearby. I'm glad I didn't fly the drone. Very similar view from down here. But you can see more of the dirty edge, I guess. There. It goes downhill. The road keeps going for a few more miles, so let's see how far we can go. It is a stunningly beautiful drive. Definitely a fitting end to our time in the frontier. Yes, because after this, we're going south. Here's from a slightly different angle. You gotta stop often because everywhere you look, there is a magnificent view. I mean, look at that waterfall. And here's an even better angle. I wonder where all that water goes. This is. I see no information anywhere about this tunnel, so do comment if you know what this is. Let's continue on this road a little longer, which according to Google Maps it is called Grand Duck Road. I think this is where we're going to turn around. According to the map, the road dead ends at a mining camp in about a mile anyway, so let's turn around. Hello there. Here's a different view. Another toe, perhaps, on this side. What a drive. And the road is a little rough in parts, but I think pretty much any vehicle could make it. I mean, I wouldn't tow a fifth wheel on it because of the tight turns, or a Class A for that matter, but as far as ground clearance, it is not bad. Not bad at all. We're getting close to the viewpoint. It 
is magnificent. I'm running out of adjectives here. Anyway, let's stop one more time. So the chopper landed down there. Maybe it is like a hiking tour or something like that? More research shall go into this, because we might be back in a couple of years when we decide to do the Dempster Highway. Yes, we are already planning another trip to the Arctic. We just can't get enough of this place. That's the actual toe of the glacier. I guess it melts into this river here. Look at that. I just realized this is the same river we saw earlier. The one that eventually straddles the border. A lot more people coming now, and it is so dusty. Let's get a better view of the mine. The mine. I really hope they know what they're doing. We're about to cross the border. Salmon Glacier self-guided tour. Premier border crossing. Let's get back to Hyder, get hitched up and continue the journey south. I don't think we're going back to Fish Creek. I didn't turn on the rooftop GoPro, so we don't really have any footage of the border crossing. And let me tell you, sometimes they really grill you with questions. So many waterfalls in these mountains. Of course, we had to stop one more time to see Bear Glacier, and it is magnificent. Here we have yet another black bear, like bidding us farewell. Perhaps our last encounter of the trip, because we're heading south rather swiftly. Destination, Vancouver. Eventually, it is going to take us a little over two days to get there. And there are a few things to see along the way, so buckle up and enjoy the ride. It was only a matter of time before we got some rain. All of a sudden, 
it feels like we are in a much more developed area. There's cattle, farmland, and at this point, we're actively looking for a place to spend the night. Here we have a rest area as we approach Smithers, but it clearly says no camping or overnight parking, so we're going to have to look elsewhere. There's another rest area coming up, and this one seems to be pretty large. Oh yeah, I don't see any signage about no overnight, so I think this is it. Well, here we are, this is a rest area. Finally found one that doesn't have any no overnight uh, camping signs. So I believe this is what we're gonna call it. It's pretty scenic. Tomorrow we'll probably stay at Prince Rupert. I don't know yet. But in any case. Good night. See you tomorrow. I'll leave there. I'll probably leave a time lapse going, see if we if we see if we can see anything. You know, there's supposed to be northern lights happening <laughs> these these days. I'm tired. I've driven more. I mean, it is, it is 7 p.m. Pacific. I've driven more than, than I had planned. Good night. It's filling up pretty good. I'm glad we got here early. It actually got dark last night, but too much light pollution. Good morning. This was certainly a pretty quiet night, uh, considering, you know, we're right next to the main highway here. And uh, I was hoping we, we, we might be able to see the northern lights, but too much light pollution. There's street lights, so yeah. But it's a, it's a beautiful setting here, actually. And it's probably the one uh, rest area that doesn't have a no overnight uh, a parking sign. So that's why we stayed here. It's the Bulkley View rest area. We got mountains over there, mountains. Over there. Anyway, we're going towards uh, Prince, Prince George today. And maybe even a little farther than that. Yeah, never fails. The whole rest area and they park blocking me. God forbid we'll walk an extra 10 steps to go to the bathroom. It is pretty dense fog.
stopping at Walmart to resupply, and A&W for lunch. I don't have to tell you, it's been a long drive. Oh no, it's getting a little smoky again. Let's check out this rest area to possibly overnight. It is very small. No, I don't think this is gonna work. Eventually we arrive at a town called Quesnel. Quenel, it is pronounced, I later found out. There is a downtown RV park and we were able to make a reservation online. It's still kind of early, so we might get a chance to walk around and explore a little bit. We're really hightailing it south, aren't we? But we are in Quisnell. Uh, this is the Quisnell downtown RV park. Very easy to book online. Uh, in fact, there's not even like a check-in process. The, the camp host just came uh, out with a you know, bunch of papers, you know, rules and stuff like that. We are walking distance to downtown. There's a river trail. And uh, this was 46.95 Canadian, which turned out to be 34.45. US or something like that. There's only one electric. There's a dump station, a municipal dump station. Uh, so you get out. This place looks brand new. I mean, that's the one. Thing. It's, but it's perfect. No trees. So it's good for Starlink. Unless you want trees, you, you book on the other side. And, uh, I really wanted to boondock today. Boondock one more time. You know, one more day in a row here. And we do have the tank capacity and the battery capacity for it. Except that it is very too hot. It's getting uncomfortably hot to, to boondock, you know. I'm sure it's going to cool down overnight, but right now it's like 30 degrees Celsius, which I'm not exactly how much it is in Fahrenheit, but it feels hot in the sun. So, um, yeah, we might go for a little walk in downtown, but today is British Columbia day, so... A lot of things might be closed. But yeah, I'm tired. So it's gonna be a nice break to spend the night here. And tomorrow, we continue towards Vancouver. We happen to be right next to a rail yard. But I guess it wouldn't be a proper RV park if it wasn't right next to a railroad track, right? Let's go for a walk. There's a brewery in town. This is the pedestrian walkway that goes over the railroad tracks. Yeah, it is noisy. It wouldn't be us if we didn't find the one brewery in town and there is walking distance. That's where we're going first, Barkerville Brewery. There's Minitini, number four. Barkerville, by the way, is a historic mining town about an hour drive east of here. Not a whole lot of people here on a Monday. I mean, it might be early. Cheers. All right, next stop, there's a casino like three blocks that way, so that's where we're going next. Here's the Quenel Cenotaph, originally erected in 1922 to honor the town's fallen servicemen and women. 
Here we have a statue of a miner at the Billy Barker Casino parking lot. Pretty cool. It kind of looks like C-3PO. Well, what happens in the casino stays at the casino. But I just say we just spent all of our Canadian money, all the money we had left, which wasn't all that much. So that's a good thing. I like the architecture of the casino. It looks like an old riverboat. The casino is named after William Billy Barker, an English prospector who in 1862, well, he and his crew struck the lead at a depth of 52 feet near Barkerville. And as the story goes, that started an industrial revolution that literally helped build British Columbia. Who knew? Lots of history here in Quenelle. And this wasn't really part of the plan, this was totally serendipitous. But now, I'm so glad we decided to stay here, because now we know it exists, and we might visit in more depth in the future. This rebuilt Cornish water wheel was originally located at Peters Creek in the 1890s, and it was connected to a pump and a winch to raise buckets of ore when the surface gold became depleted. It was brought here in 1930 to form part of this memorial, Heritage Corner. Here's also what remains of the boiler and the crankshaft of one SS Enterprise, not the one you're thinking about. The SS Enterprise, the first stern wheeler. And there's a picture here. Here's the also historic wooden pedestrian bridge, allegedly the longest wood truss walking bridge in the world. And there is a pub on the other side. I don't know if we should go. There is um, the world's largest gold pan, but I think we're going to see that tomorrow on the way out. Pretty cool town, I didn't know it was so historic. We shall return someday, as I usually say. Yeah, Billy Barker is omnipresent in this town. Well, we came back. We like this place. Cheers. The brewery was a little more lively this time, meaning there was one other person besides us. But it is close to the RV park, and all that walking around made us thirsty. It turns out there's a river walk, so, since the days are still long, we're going to go to the confluence of the Quenelle and Fraser rivers. It is called Letico Dene Park, named after the Letico Dene tribe, the original settlers of this area. There's a pretty swift current down there, let me tell you, look at that. See, this is the riverfront trail. We are here and we're going here to the confluence. And this is it. Confluence. Yes, the sun will soon set, but I am very glad we decided to do this trail. And this is it, the confluence. We've made it, and the sun is gone. And yes, this is the confluence of the Fraser and the Quesnel River. And, uh, I wish I would have brought the drone because I'm sure you could t tell a difference in the color of the water as they merge together. But uh, maybe tomorrow morning we'll just do a quick flight. Well, the sun's setting somewhere back there, so let's get back. 
before it gets dark. One last panoramic look. That's the swift current. Well, good morning. Well, Quesnel, is that how you pronounce it? Quesnel here, uh, it was a pleasant surprise. Nice, nice small town. I mean, I mean, there's not a whole lot to do, but this is a nice small town. Now we're gonna go to the dump station. It's a municipal free dump station, and then we're gonna see the world's largest gold pan. Yeah, it's totally a thing. <laughs> and then we continue driving south. It is very nice for municipalities to have affordable city campgrounds, free dump station. It makes you feel welcome. There's also free daytime RV parking and potable water, which is a nice touch as well. It has started to rain, but we had to come see the world's largest gold pan. Well, right here by the Quesnel Depot is the site of the world's largest gold pan. Is it everything we're expecting? It certainly is. And, uh, yeah, well, we continue. We continue driving south. And yes, I know it is pronounced Quenel. It is going to be a long drive on the Caribou Highway. I don't know why, but the navigation has taken us on these back roads, presumably to avoid Williams Lake, maybe there is traffic, but it is perhaps the most scenic part of the drive so far. We even have cows on the road. And we're back on the Caribou Highway. Looks like the drive is about to get a lot more scenic as we begin to approach the foothills of the coast mountains. I suddenly start seeing a resemblance to Washington and Oregon, the part just east of the Cascades. This area must have very similar climate. It is a striking landscape. The contrast of the dark green with the beige and brown, it is very peculiar. This has certainly turned into an unexpectedly scenic drive.
$155 to fill up. That was the... Well, we were running on fumes too. Now, it is starting to look like coastal Washington and Oregon. We must be in a more rainforest-like climate. We're finally arriving in Hope, British Columbia. This happens to be the filming location of First Blood, the first Rambo movie, which, after Scarface, may be one of my favorite movies of the early 80s. And the main reason we're stopping here. It is a breathtaking location, surrounded by all these mountains. This is where we're staying. It is called Coquihalla Campsite. This is our site, just for one night. I'm not even gonna unhitch since everything we want to see is walking distance. Yeah, no Starlink here. There's no way. Anyway, Hope uh, was the filming location for First Blood, also known as the first Rambo movie. And as a child of the 80s, we have to check it out, right? I like those little fifth wheels. Gateway to Holiday Land. Yeah, that looks like the sign from the movie. Or is it? Is it me or does that sign show up in the movie? Anyway, the first thing we're gonna see is the bridge, which the original no longer is, exists, but it is almost at the exact location. The wooden sign, if you rewind and look closely, is a slightly different font, so... Nope, not the original. Hey, check it out, this is it. The old bridge was demolished and replaced in 2011. But still, it might be fun to walk on the new one. If you ask me, the old bridge had a lot more character, but I guess it wasn't good and they replaced it. Let's see, because according to a video I saw, you can still see part of the old bridge somewhere here. Where could it be? That's all that remains of the original bridge. So yeah, this would have been John Rambo minding his own business, walking into town, only to get arrested, and, uh, and the rest is film history. Now, we are, we are kind of hungry, just like Rambo was, but luckily nowadays there's a brewery in town, so we're gonna check it out. Beer bites, growlers on flights. <sighs> 40 minutes later, here's our huge burrito. <sighs> well, they took forever, but that was certainly a great burrito. We got the brisket burrito and, yeah, not like your classic seven layer burrito no it would have had like cabbage and lettuce and other 
It was good. Well, apparently somewhere around here, I don't think this overpass was here in, in, the, in 1981, but uh, somewhere around, around here was the sign that said, you know, gateway to, um, to Wonderland, to Holidayland, and, uh, and the Welcome to Hope sign. Let's walk down this street to, to see the, the very spot where uh, Rambo encounters the policeman. Yeah, I have a feeling the town has changed quite a bit in the past uh, oh, 40 years. Yeah, this right here is the entrance to the town. Tell you what, I should have rewatched the movie before coming here. Because I don't know exactly, I don't recall exactly the angle. But I do believe this is the very spot where Rambo meets uh, the sheriff for the first time. And it was probably looking that way. Of course, it looks different 40 years later. And here they have a Chevy dealer now. Yeah, wood carvings seem to be a thing here. Here's looking back towards the entrance of town. And there's a visitor center here on the right, but it is kind of late. Here they have a Rambo cutout, so you can take a picture, looking like Rambo. That's the visitor center, it's a trailer, but there's another wood carving right there. Let's go by the Fraser River really quick. There is some kind of memorial. The pyramid marks the approximate location of a former fort, Fort Hope National Historic Site of Canada. As a sheriff. This is Memorial Park, and there are wood carvings everywhere. Yeah, there's a carving of the sheriff from the movie, Will Tiso. I believe Rambo is back there. It doesn't really look like him, but <laughs> there he is. Hello there. Well, after the Rambo carving, we have one more, just one more point of interest here in town. I mean, there are many other uh, filming locations, but we're just gonna see one more. Which, by the way, very picturesque town. I mean, we, we are surrounded by mountains everywhere. <laughs> no wonder they chose this as the, as the filming location. Some very large trees here at Memorial Park.
we continue roaming the lonely residential streets of Hope, hoping we might find another film and location. What else might we find here? And I think that's it. That tall tree. Well, this is what is known as the H tree, H, the letter H, and it was featured uh, prominently well, for a few seconds in that, uh, you know, motorcycle chase scene in the movie. Let's see if there's any uh, signage. In 40 years, the bottom has filled up a little and now it's more like a narrow V, but I'm glad it's still here. I don't know the exact spot, but these are the railroad tracks. Here we have another wood carving and an interesting Volkswagen bug and yet another wood carving. The Hope Curling Club doesn't get any more Canadian than that, eh? Actually, I read the sport was created in Scotland, but nowadays it's totally a Canadian thing. I don't know why that melody came to my mind. And we're back at the campground. Tomorrow we continue towards Vancouver. Yes, tomorrow we're switching it up. And for the next couple of days we're going to enjoy what the largest metropolis in British Columbia has to offer. After so many days in the frontier, this will be a welcome change. Also, a day trip to the province's capital, Victoria. All that on the next episode. Until then, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Riding it